Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hair Tube. I'm here today with Jordan. Hi. <laughs> so you probably you wouldn't have met Jordan before, but um, she's uh, one of the assistants here at Axis, and um, I asked her if I could do a hair today because yeah. my other model cancelled on me, and um, she sort of recently had a hair done by one of the um, stylists here. And they just sort of flirted with the idea of um, some lighter pieces in it, and she likes it. So she's like, well, you can do my hair if you want to make me a little bit blonder. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And I cut your hair probably, what, six weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, so probably just need some maintenance. But yeah. um, I think we're going to have some fun because what I would like to do is um, add, add the blonde where I think it might sort of work better with the haircut rather than just like placing blonde in the hair or placing colour in the hair because we want to be lighter or darker. I actually want to try and sort of work with the canvas I've created in terms of the haircut and place the, the colour in there so that it actually complements that shape. So I, instead of a sort of a coming from the top, I actually want it to be like on the inside. And uh, in the back, let me just spin Jordan around. In the back, you can see it's, it's all pretty um, dark still with just those soft highlights in there. So um, I want to try and make her a little bit blonder. But still brunette, not too blonde. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you guys probably... Um, don't realise, but Jordan often spends time behind the camera when I'm doing live streams and things, so I think she feels a bit strange actually sitting, <laughs> sitting in front of it. Front of yeah. it. Whereas um, I just feel strange in front of it all the time, probably looks strange too. <laughs> um, I'm going to get Jordan wrapped up, and then when you come back, we're going to start a colour, and then um, I'll have a chat to you guys about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Cool. See you sec. <laughs> you meant to do the thumbs up, Jordan. <laughs> Okay, so my uh, lightness mix up, got my Matrix Lightmaster. Um, I'm using 30 volt uh, off scalp. I'm going to do a combination of uh, weaves and backcombing um, because I want to be able to have a, a nice natural uh, diffused root and uh, I want to get as much um, um, variation in there as I can. I don't want it to be blonde, but I, I want to make sure that um, I put enough color in there so that we can see. Um, Rather than it looking lighter, I want it to be more defined. I pluck or dulled your brother. Yeah. Yep. Man. What are you doing? Hey, yeah. Anyway. Yep. Yep. So it's sixty. Yep, I'm pretty sure it's 60 mil. Alright, so what 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 did you say it was? I'm getting 59.50. Okay. And what'd you say about the rim? Okay, no worries. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 59.50. Yep, no worries. So if I tell him on the flange it was 59.50, so we're assuming that it'd be 60 on the rim? Yeah, but he's going to say, because I'm just telling him I can't get the burners in the rim. The only thing is then, just to confirm, it's all going to be 100%. Well, then Simmons, because we know what Simmons is short to turn, then we're 100% because then we're giving the well, that. Well, wouldn't it be the same as the rims I took on? Wouldn't it be the standard hub width? Okay, so this, it's a center bore, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hang on a second. Let, let me just check because I'm I'm pretty sure the center bore I'm pretty sure the center bore was sixty millimeters standard. No, no, the center bore the center bore is fifty nine point six. As per Mazda. Mazda RX seven series three factory center bore is fifty nine point six millimeters. Yeah, 
sweet list, you know what I mean? Yep. So if you want to get 51.6, then you can be sure to do that. It's not the tighter, he does it the better it will fit, but if he does it too tight where he can't get over, we're going to have to machine either the flange or the axle or the rim itself. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks. Okay. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Okay. okay, so mixed up. Um, Light Master with uh, Bonder inside. And um, now I'm going to section Jordan's hair up and then we'll get started. So when you see, I'll have it all sectioned and ready to show you what's happening. We're going to start in the nape. And while it's narrow enough, I'll actually just use one foil for the entire section, but as the head gets wider here, we may need to um, do it into two sections so we don't get any um, drag. Lucky last for Jordan anyway. It's um it's a big process. It's a very big process. On to our last um foil. Remember our last Weave, slice. So um, now that's all done. Where's Geordie under there? Let me just, so you guys can see her. Just be careful when you're pulling these back too because you don't want to, um, don't want to get any bleeding or shift the, there she is. <laughs> we can just put a little clip here. So uh, we'll process that now. Um, this is visual processing, obviously the Lightner has a shelf life, D depending on your manufacturer, I'm using Matrix, so it's about 60 minutes and you need to rinse it off and reapply if it's not light enough because uh, leaving there won't do anything. Um, so I'm just going to process these visually. The back will have to come off first, um, it's just why I always start in the back when you're lightening like this and you want to control it, manage condition, when the back's lightened already come off, you don't leave it there and wait for the front to catch up. Um, sometimes in previous videos I have done... Um, 
two separate uh, mixes. So I'd do like 30 volt in the back and then 40 in the front. Probably not likely, it's more likely to do uh, uh, 20 volt in the back and then 30 volt in the front. So that's lightening slower. And then because you use a more aggressive lightener at the front, it catches up. Uh, this is not the case. So I'll rinse the back off, um, continue to process that. And when you see this again, we're going to be uh, applying our root color and then our toner. So see you guys soon. lightened the hair now it's time to apply our toner so what I've done here is actually um, something that I've, I've been doing for a fair bit so I've, I've done what I do with my toners is rather than say if I want a level six using a level six I actually use I actually use a level that is darker considerably darker so in this instance a level three and mix it with a level eight to get my like level four or five, because I find that the darker colors contain more color pigment and you just get um, better coverage and better depth. So um, with this particular um, root color, I've done half, sorry, I've done 15 grams of three, sorry, let me start again. I've done 25 grams of three N, I've done 15 grams of three V, and then I've done, is that, no, sorry, five grams of 3V, 3VV in matrix color sink, and then I've, that's 30, and then I've done 30 grams of um, 8P. So we should get like a really cool, chocolatey, fun tone, hopefully, fingers crossed. Take your memories and throw them at the door. Forgave my enemies, cause it's not like before. I know the risk you're taking, you're taking You look like you're not sure You're saying that I'm faking, I'm faking I promise that I'm pure Our roots are now on um, and you can see that beautiful um, violet pearl tone coming through there. Um, we're going to let that process. I'm going to take Geordie over to the basin now. I'm going to apply the ends at the basin, let it all process together bring it back here, um, and then we're gonna uh, dry it all off. I'm gonna give her a little trim, we'll style it, and then we'll see how beautiful the color is. So um, I'm gonna get over the basin. All toned and ready to dry. Smooth setter, makes everything that little bit better. See, I'm a poet too, Geordie. <laughs> um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I cut Geordie's hair about four weeks ago. It does need a little trim, but you guys who follow me on the channel would already know that if I'm not making a major change to the length of the hair, generally I do it dry. So I'll put the smooth setter in the hair when it's wet. Uh, I'm going to flat brush the hair dry. Then we'll do the haircut and then we'll style it. So uh, I'm going to get into drying it right now. Cue the music, please. Now. a couple of things I need to do and look you can see that Jordan's hair is already in a great shape because I, I like I said I cut it like four was it four or five weeks ago something like that four, five, yeah. yeah so I'm basically going to go around the um the face and reframe it maybe like quarter of a centimeter like you know an eighth of an inch or something but in the back you can see it just falls a little bit heavier there you can see how much we're impacted by the light too when I go like this guys sorry about that um, and then here on the shoulder, I actually like the weight of that, how it falls. So I'm just gonna make this like that. So let's start with the front. It's really important that we find Geordie's natural part and then we pull it back. And where it falls is where we're gonna go from. So you can see it splits there. I'm gonna take a triangle section. 
guys can see there where the triangle section is. So in this um, shape, because Jordan um, wears her hair in with that side, you wear it there most of the time, yeah? Side part. Yeah, you wear it, wear it just parted naturally, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So if someone's always going to wear their part in the same spot, I think it's best to cut this shape there. Often we do it in the middle so we can offer versatility, but what happens is, is if they want to wear it to the side, they end up having like shape on one side and the other side seems like long. So there's a sort of trade-off. So because Geordie likes to like wash and wear, she's very active, she's actually a personal trainer, she go and follow her. I'll, I'll put her um, Instagram um, in the description and on this video too. Um, she needs it to be quick. So she doesn't want to have to go navigating around the bathroom, try and find a part. She, put, she combs her back, pushes her hair forward, split, bang, it's done. So that's why in this instance, I'm gonna do it where a natural parting is. So I'm gonna spin around so you, you guys can see the projection. And I'm just gonna put her chair down so I don't project it out of frame. So I'm holding the hair over the parting. And then we just want to very carefully soften the ends just so we give the hair room to move so it doesn't fall too heavy. We'll pull that back, see how that looks. Maybe a touch shorter, not too much. We can still get that back, can't we? Yep, easy. Jordy can't get it back, she will let me know about it very, very quickly. These are, these are important lifestyle factors that we should always discuss with our clients because, yeah, okay, it, would, I, would I, am I suggesting that we go cutting people's hair to tie it up? No, but this is like, lifestyle is a huge factor in, in, in the shapes that people are asking me for. So if someone says, you know, you can do whatever you want, Adam, just make sure I can tie it all back. And then she goes to pull it all back and it falls out and she's got to put a pin here, pin there, pin there. Like she's going to have the shits, right? So we just want to make sure that um, we're listening to our clients and then we find that balance between um, having a haircut that is modern and wearable and relevant in terms of fashion and then also relevant to their lifestyle so that it's wash and wear and it's, it's convenient and um, it works for them. And it's win-win. Then you, you feel comfortable as a stylist with um, your client leaving the salon with something you know is modern and people are going to admire and you're not going to be cursed in the bathrooms in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> when we're trying to quickly get it back on that day where um, we're just using dry shampoo and not blow drying it. Yeah, that's better. We just want to really show off the cheekbones a bit. So once we curl it, it'll be like that. And obviously when we're at straight, it's well under the chin. Now, sometimes we can blend these front parts in. Sometimes you can leave it disconnected. I'm going to leave it disconnected because I've got the luxury of having the previous shaping in there from my last haircut. So I'm just projecting this out like I was gonna cut it and I'm just gonna let it fall naturally. So you guys can see where that existing shape is here. So it is disconnected, but there is a little bit of existing shaping in there from the last haircut I did. And I'm just going to, again, work with a, what, like a pie section, narrower at the top, wider at the bottom. And we actually wanna take the corner off just like this, then everything comes to that point. So you bring the sides from behind the ears straight into that one little middle guide and we're gonna snip it all together and make sure we don't drop it. I'll just let Geordie's chair down again because you guys are out of frame. Just again, as we did in the front, chin down a bit, Jordan, thanks. As we did in the um, front, we just want to give the hair room to expand. So we, we're cutting like really, really super fine, delicate channels. We're not going across the shape and chopping into it. We just want to make sure that we're going straight in and not creating any sort of change to that angle that we put on the hair. Then while we've got that up there, grab yourself a clip, clip that out of the way. Then this hair underneath, we're actually going to do the same technique. So we're going to bring it up. 
and I actually will come around this way because I'm right. So we actually want to have the hair coming down. And can you see that? The hair comes down like this. And then we just want to, again, give it room to move. We don't want to have anything on the exterior. We don't want it to look like it's been overlaid or chopped into. This again is just giving the hair room to expand so it doesn't all fall heavy in the one place. Jordan said to me she liked the haircut I gave her last time because it was actually quite blunt. So this doesn't get rid of the blunt shape on the end. It just, you can see it's still blunt. It just gives the hair a little bit more room to move rather than going like this. If we go horizontal, we actually will make the hair look lighter and then that can actually remove that blunt look. Blunt doesn't have to be weighty and heavy. It just has to look like it's all one length. I just think these are some of the little tips I like to share with you guys because I believe this is what makes what I do a little bit different to others. It just gives it that little bit of, see it just moves around a little bit, but on the ends here, we're still blunt across here. Just now gives it that little bit more movement, just as it does here on the side. Let's do some styling. Ta-da! How good does Jordan look? Look at this. This is amazing. I'm just gonna grab my little matrix product right here. Just head that way for me. Like, no, no, like this. Oh, like, oh. Yeah, close your eyes. Just put a little bit on each side just to make sure we keep our... I say that these guys have hear me say it in the salon and this way. Yeah, just close your eyes again. What this does just keeps that shape on the inside of the face like a set because otherwise um, you end up with those little tickly hairs that just bug the shit out of you on the inside of your face. And then the rest we just want to make it fun. Yeah, it's pretty cute. That was Geordie's first time. How long you worked with me for? That's the first time I've done your hair. I don't know if that's a good thing. Well, I coloured your hair. I mean, I cut it all the time, but yeah, it was, well, it was, maybe it was <laughs> worth the wait. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. I, I think um, if you go back to the beginning of the video, obviously there's a distinct um, before and after. But the thing I wanted to bring you guys' attention to is if you're going to put blonde highlights in someone's hair, put them in. Like, get them in there. Because otherwise they just get lost. There's lots of colour in there, right? That's what it's about. Good shape. Real good. Real good. What do you think? You feel different? Yeah. Hey, Is it like... It brightens up my face a whole lot more. Yeah. Would you say you were still brunette though? Yeah. Yeah, good. You're good because I think we spoke about transitioning maybe to get you a bit lighter, but um, we had a chat about the condition for a few reasons. Even if Jordan was a client to come and see me all the time, I'd have the same conversation. But she's going to walk around at Axis all day, and if she's got trashed hair, <laughs> she's not actually a very good advocate for our business. And not that she did before, but my point being is I'm not going to go and push her from being a brunette to a blonde. It can be done. But you know that there's consequences for doing that, and provided that your client understands that the condition is going to be compromised, 
It's not going to break off or anything, but you're going to have to accept that when you go lighter and you quickly, that you are going to um, have to use some great products like we have from Matrix that are going to mask the cosmetic um, effects of going lighter. We did use Light Master with Bonder inside today. Obviously, that's going to protect it. We did the post color treatment. I used the Rebond shampoo and conditioner from Matrix uh, at the basin. Um, the, all those things help. So um, you still need to understand the signs of coloring here and make sure you don't overdo it in one sitting there. Well, it's our day off. We should get out of here, eh? Thanks for coming in. Welcome. Jordan actually said she really enjoyed it. Like, uh, just to come in when the salon's closed, usually, you know, she's like running around <laughs> and making stuff happen. So for her to sit down and chill out, she almost fell asleep. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you think you might know someone who may benefit from this video, please share. If it's the first time you've seen one of my videos and you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and put the bell right next to it. Click that too. Apparently, that's important. So you get a notification when I upload a video. And um, go and follow Jordan on Instagram. Here's a thing coming across here like... Yep, there you go. <laughs> that's a username going across there. Um, and until next time, from Canberra Australia. Actually, I've got to stop there. This is our last video. This is our last video for 2020. No, they saved the best for last. <laughs> well, we're about to find out. Um, thanks for everyone's supported this year. Uh, big shout out to Matrix. This wouldn't be possible without them. Um, they're a very supportive brand of growing grassroots hairdressers and acknowledge that the large proportion of people that are watching my videos and benefiting from them, maybe some of the less privileged people like myself that have access to education because I'm in a city where we have access to that stuff. You might be in a remote part of Australia or somewhere else in the world where you can't drive eight hours to go to a class, so you can get online these days and you can watch a goofy guy like me with a beautiful girl like Jordan and maybe you might learn something from me. So um, thanks for those of you who have supported me and, and again, thanks to Matrix for supporting that uh, mission of mine. It's very important uh, to me. I think it's important that you don't always do things for money. It's not like we don't generate some revenue from YouTube, but I think you need to give back and YouTube's my way of giving back to an industry that's been so generous to me over the years. So thanks very much. That's enough of the rant. See you next time, guys. Uh, happy Christmas. Bye. I know you have your thumbs up. Oh. <laughs>